It's 6.55 in the morning. Welcome to Gatwick Airport. For today's fixture, we are hopping on a plane and making our way to St. Peter Port. This is our journey to watch Guernsey FC. Come on, lovers, we're going on our holidays. After a 45 minute flight over the English Channel, we have arrived at Foots Lane, the home of Guernsey FC. They are members of the Ithmian League and today's visitors are Basingstoke. It's the Green Lions versus the Dragons. Who do you think wins out of those two? Surely a dragon. Oh, I guess we never know. This multi-use stadium is the main sports venue on the island. It has a whopping capacity of 5,000 with 720 available seats. What a cracking little stand as well. The club was formed in 2011 and since then has had to raise over two million pounds in 10 years to compete at this level. Why? Well, they pay for all the match officials and 28 players and staffs travel to come to Guernsey. Proper commitment, we love non-league. This is our first overseas non-league dugout and it looks a little bit like this. Situated on the athletics track that goes round the ground, this strong metal framework structure has perspex at the back and on the sides with a wooden bench for seating. One thing you can notice is that it is on wheels so you can take it wherever you want. It was quite heavy actually. As for the technical area, it is a 3G artificial surface. Now it's time for our manager cliche of the week. And this one was sent in from our friend Sam up in Scotland, who is the creator of Footy Adventures. Go check out his channel, it's great. He has sent in an absolute classic cliche. Oh, what a goal. But I tell you what, he had no right to score from there. The manager cliche train is still on the move, so get your suggestions in the comments section below and we will do them at another non-league dugout. You probably won't fly there though. It's a lot of effort. Quick fire facts. The club had to play 20 games in 35 days last season and to gain promotion to the Ithmian League, they had to win four games in four days. They only went and done it. Quick fire facts. Did you know I once played for Guernsey in a fans game against Whitehawk? How did I play? I'll let you decide. <laughs> Quick fire facts. Former England international Matt Letizia signed for Guernsey back in 2012 and made his debut for the club at the ripe old age of 44. Unfortunately, they lost that game what a shame. Welcome to Ref Cribs. Let's check out the facilities. We've got the toilet and football storage unit combo with the two accompanying power showers. The team sheets are in, so let's meet the officials. Philip Jones, assistant referee. Well, hey, referee. Nigel Owen, assistant referee. Michael, in two words, sum up this changing room. Very good. I've been informed by the club's press officer, Nick Legg, what an absolute legend by the way, thanks for having us, that the Guernsey Club crest is a representation of the traditional coat of arms, our country, and a little twist on the England Three Lions. Hi, it's Stu, assistant coach at Guernsey FC. Uh, just take you through the warm up that we did, that I did as well, I'm knackered. We did a little bit of head tennis, Lads get a little bit social, it's a nice bit of interaction for them. Get some chat and a bit of fun. Do some shuttle work, get the body activated, some uh, stabilization and some dynamics. Then into a little bit of keep ball. A lot of our training is focused around possession. And then, uh, as you can see, up to a bit of finishing, longer range passing, the boys are ready. Hopefully they're uh, good to go. Uh, Tony Vance, Guernsey FC manager. How do you cope as a non-league manager 
for Guernsey. It's definitely interesting. It is unique, absolutely. Uh, I think you, you learned today you had to get up at probably stupid o'clock to get over here for a game. It really takes it out on you. We do it sort of 20 odd times a year. It's enjoyable, the camaraderie's there. The, the downside of it is this is, I think, our 13th game of the season now, and we're now on our fifth goalkeeper. And I think we've had seven or eight different centre back partnerships. So, uh, from a consistency point of view, it's, it's absolutely um, well, really, really difficult. And what's your style of play? Well, hopefully you'll see today. I mean, obviously it depends on, on of course, on the opposition. It's all about the result, isn't it? But, but we like to pass the ball. We like to play out quite relentless in that, and I'm a little bit sort of uh, a bit of a stato and, and, and like sort of uh, all the all the sort of the data around how we can play. So we've got to we've got to work with what we've got. We coach a lot, and uh, as I said, the, the beauty of it is that the more hours we put on the training ground with them, the, what we get out and the output and the game is, is there for us to see. And if you could share the dugout with any manager, past or present, who would it be? I think right now it would be Bielsa. I love him. I think he's, I mean, I'm a Leeds fan. I'm sure he speaks English. I reckon he's just making it up. But uh, yeah, I'd love to love to be on the training ground with him and just, just sort of work with him for a bit. He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's nuts. I've got my hired viz on, so I'm allowed on the grass for this week's pitch review. Had a little chat with the groundsman and he said he has put a lot of sand down to help stabilise the pitch and keep it dry because it is used by a rugby team and the athletics. And they've also been known to use helicopters, yes, helicopters, to dry the pitch out. But where does it go on our ratings board? We're gonna go for playable with a little sprinkle of sand. Maybe he's lost the opportunity and the number seven with a strike there. So it's Govine's collected it and he's knocked it in in the middle. Smith can't quite get to it, comes to Ross Allen and then it comes off Kieran Mahon. Now, how will Bates and Soap respond? They're on the attack now with Wilson. Goes down towards the byline and is appealing for a penalty, which is given. And it's scored. And so Brown levels things up. the half hour mark and here is an opportunity for Basingstoke and that's a clear shooting chance it's off the post and in and Basingstoke take the lead get in there Cook and the ball comes into Brown for the shot and it's a goal it's a third goal for Basingstoke Okay, so I've taken a break from my stewarding gig to try some of the local cuisine. I have gone for a bacon and cheese burger topped off with a bit of mustard. This has set me back £4.50. I've added a tea for £1.50. That was a total of £6. Let's see how it tastes. Jam packed. Punchy. Oh. Sensational. Liam Mahon, midfielder. This yet forward. So it's Rogers is going to be taking this free kick and he's killed it and it's tipped over by Callum Stanton. Fellows all on top. Here is Allen with a great opportunity and he scores! Ross Allen gets it back for Guernsey to 3-2. Far side, Smith heads it into the danger area perhaps and it comes back to Rogers with a thunderous effort. So that to Dodds, goes for the long range shot, not too far wide but I think Strudley had that covered. And we come back to Liam Mahon who sends it into the middle, there's the header, oh what a header from Loring! Rehoy, Mahon is really coming into the game, gets it back and then Rehoy with the shot and it's just wide. It's four against four here. That's a great ball in, and the shot comes across, oh, and that's a great goal for Basingstoke. They found the net again, and it's Lynch once more. Not wide to Mahon, plenty of players in the area. 
and it, oh, it's just over the head of Ruhoy. Dodd is there, takes a left-footed shot. Oh, goalkeeper saves, and then it's into the back of the net from Ross Allen. It's the long throw comes in by Dodd. And he does get the flick from Hiller, and it goes straight to Letizia, who scores his first goal for Goethe FC. Palmer really showing good pace there, gets the ball in, and that's a great ball and a wasted chance from Wilson. And here's Wilson with a chance here. A great shot, and Callum Stanton makes a brilliant save. There's the final whistle, and an entertaining game. Ross Allen, striker for Guernsey FC. Ross, I make that 263 goals in 266 appearances. That is some record. Yeah, pretty proud of it. I think I'm now at the stage of my career where any goal is a bonus, just playing is a bonus, I think. And obviously, a game like today, it was all about getting a point, getting something out of that game. Guernsey is a very unique club. How do you find the travelling? It's challenging. It doesn't get any easier. I think, remember last week, early January, got to get up on the red eye, um, you know, five, six hours later you're playing a game of football. You can't really explain it to anyone unless you do it regularly and then you, you kind of you just learn to love it. Is it the non-league equivalent of the Champions League? <laughs> <laughs> you see these teams come over here and to them it's a special day out, which gives us something as well and I think we can, we do form some good relationships with some of these teams, which is what it's all about and, and getting Guernsey on the map a little bit in the UK and obviously you look at people like Alex Scott who's gone away and doing an amazing job at Bristol City so we're also getting it's a talent pathway that we can get people playing in the mainland. Is the target to reach that 300? Yeah of course um, but like I say it's all about the performance of the team now and, and being a leader amongst the group and we've got some great young players coming through so yeah hopefully next year we can push on and, and really develop this group to get a ball in he can and it's for Allen to score and apply the finishing touch and that is superb play from the Green Lions.